All right, folks, so welcome back to part four of Project Poor Man. Thanks for tuning in to the Wanneroo channel. And uh, so with this project, it's been really cool. Uh, I've since then talked to other uh, folks online and, uh, you know, in different situations where maybe they don't have the money or they don't have the space to reload. And this Lee hand press here, uh, it comes down to uh, if you need to, uh, yes, you can do it. You don't have to have a bench and all this other stuff to make it happen. So um, I've shown in this whole video series how you can pull that off. The other thing is this video is going to be a mix of, I actually filmed this video a month ago and then uh, found the footage. Some of it had uh, me totally out of focus and it just looked real weird. And then uh, some of the other shots were out of frame. It was an, it's a new camera I'm using, so I'm still kind of getting used to it. So it is what it is. Some of the footage is perfectly salvageable. So this video is going to be a mix of some stuff I'm going to shoot today. And then also too um, some of the stuff that uh, is good from before. So we'll go ahead and wrap this up. And uh, at the end of the video with some good thoughts on what we have learned from this. And uh, the first thing though that I want to go through is what if you don't have a chronograph so that's going to be kind of the point of this video all right folks so we're out here on the range today and if you don't have a chrono what can you kind of go off of well there's maybe a couple different um, data points you can go off of one of the things is that probably for most of you what you're kind of looking for when you're just starting out reloading um, or you're just refilling the ammunition you have is you're probably looking to duplicate uh, your factory load so when you have that as kind of a baseline, you can use that in terms of how the firearm kind of feels in terms of recoil. And then also, too, if it's a semi-automatic firearm, you're looking for that ejection pattern uh, from the firearm. So, uh, for instance, if you're uh, duplicating a, a factory load, like in this case, we're pretty much trying to duplicate a 230 grain full metal jacket load in 45 ACP. Um, if we have shot uh, factory ammunition, um, you know, with that uh, bullet weight, uh, and maybe we've tried a couple different brands, we should have a general idea where that pattern is going to be as it kind of uh, the brass uh, flies out of the gun. And so what you can kind of go off of with your own load is that uh, compare it in terms of does it feel weak or is it much stronger than that? So. If we have real strong ejection of the brass, where it's just blowing the brass way out of there um, compared to maybe that factory load, um, you can kind of also, too, compare some of the data you're using in your reloading manual or whatever recipe you're using. And so if you're loading more on the low end, perhaps, and for some reason you're getting, the, you know, just this massive strong recoil and uh, ejection from the firearm, then it's going to be something where something doesn't add up there, you know. So you have to kind of take all of the data and kind of, um, you know, try to come up and, and use that to paint the best picture you can, if that makes any sense. And then also, too, um, in terms of uh, what if it's too weak? And so um, if I was loading more on the low end of the scale and my rounds, you know, the brass cases are just kind of trickling out of the gun, or something like that, then I know I'm probably more on the weaker side of things. And then another thing too is we can compare it with targets. So I'll show you. If we have our standard IDPA target right here, um, if you've never shot IDPA or USPSA, I highly recommend that you give that a go at some point um, for a variety of reasons. But uh, let's say for instance that you shoot factory ammo, we're going to go for the zero here center mass. Um, in that factory ammo, uh, pretty much you, let's say that uh, you nail zero each time with um, however you're aiming. You aim the same way perhaps with your reloads and perhaps they, the group is down here or maybe it's up here. You can use that as a data point too to kind of look at in terms of are you weak, or are you strong on your powder load, um, maybe your overall length, what are you using for that. Um, you know, there's some folks that a lot of times will use too short of an overall length, with, which can increase pressures. And then also, too, maybe too long of an overall length, which that can have its own issues. So the different things like that, that you're just going to have to kind of go by the seat of your pants um, and kind of add all the things up together if you don't have that chronograph. 
do have a chronograph awesome it gives you another data point so you can kind of compare the actual data you're getting from that with whatever recipe you're loading and whatever data they have from that and kind of try to tie it all in along with your accuracy and other things to kind of give you the full picture of what entirely is going on with your load and then you can decide whether you want to scale that load up or down so today what we're going to be looking for is i'll go ahead and i'll get my gopro on and we're just going to be looking for good solid um, ejection from the firearm you know pretty moderate steady recoil nothing too extreme nothing too light and also too that we have some degree of accuracy as well one of the things i like to do is i like to put the target about 20 yards away uh, because if i do shoot in matches and stuff like that um, you know to me that's kind of a good baseline um, most people can hit <laughs> pretty good from three to seven yards away so you know sometimes you know that's useful to do but usually i go for 20 yards so we'll go ahead and we'll get our target up we'll do a little bit of shooting and we'll see how the whole whole deal is and how this load is and if we want to make any changes or not folks the stuff we're going to be using today for our video is we have our glock 21 sf clone uh, with our lone wolf lower check out i did a review on that recently and also i put out a review on this hollow sun too um, check those videos out very happy with this lower we have our team wendy helmet here rigged up with our gopro uh, team wendy helmets i love them i've been using them at work for years now super happy with them and then we have 10 rounds here loaded up for our first accuracy test um, that we're going to do with our idpa target so that's what we're going to roll with for the gear that we're using today okay folks so we've got uh, one round in the magazine there let's go ahead and see how it goes that loaded up just fine shot just fine so that was good i'm pretty happy with that now we have a magazine with a uh, couple of rounds in it let's go ahead and give it another go So that shot pretty good so pretty happy with that all right guys so let's go ahead and see uh, how our ejection pattern is going to be here uh, from the firearm and also to what our accuracy is we're going to go ahead and go for the center zero there and see what we get Well, we did have a little jam up there. Back in business. All right, so let's go for the uh, top there and the top zero, and let's see what we get. There we go. All right, folks, so how do we do on accuracy? Well, uh, first group was not the greatest in the world, and then I really tightened it up when I shot the second group. Uh, you did see two hiccups there uh, on camera, and the reason is I got a brand new Glock 21 magazine. Every time that I use a new magazine in that gun, it usually chokes on the fifth or sixth round and so once i use it and kind of break the magazine in then we're good to go so i pulled another magazine out and had no further reliability issues from there so uh just seems to be an issue anytime with a new magazine it gets a little bit cranky there and then once it breaks in it's fine so don't worry about that um 
But yeah, the first group kind of strung them a little bit all over. Uh, did have some here in the center, which was good, and had a few which dropped down a little low. So that group was kind of a little more all over the place. But the second one here, this is more what I'm looking for. Um, if you can shoot with that accuracy in a USPSA or IDPA match um, from 20 yards away uh, under the pressure of time, then um, you'll do pretty good as long as you can keep your shots up and kind of keep things moving and get score a good time then you're pretty much in the ballpark so that's what we're looking for sometime in the future i might look at doing some accuracy tests with the ransom rest or something like that but i kind of like to do hey practical accuracy shooting from 20 yards um you know uh just regular uh, two-footed stance and just like we would in a match pretty much or most of the time in a match um the other thing too the ejection was pretty uh, solid out of the gun. I suspect that maybe I could drop the powder charge uh, by a tenth of a grain or even two tenths of a grain and I'd probably still be good. Um, it feels pretty solid so um, I would say we're not on the high end uh, but we're also not on the low end either just based off the feel and that kind of correlates actually with the data that I have and were our powder charges at 4.6 grains. So that's how it kind of worked out. Um, once I had that magazine hook up, I got one of my um, other uh, older magazines out and uh, went ahead and ran some rounds through. Everything was fine. So just a magazine issue. But hey, usually whenever you film, something's going to go wrong, and that's just the way it is. So let's go ahead. We'll tie in some more footage and then wrap this baby up. All right, let's shoot some steel with this. Okay, that works. All right, let's shoot some steel here. Well, folks, in conclusion with Project Poor Man, I have to say um, that seemed to shoot pretty well. Uh, I did a little more shooting after I turned the camera off, and I shot even from more distance, almost 30 yards away, and uh, hit the other two steel gongs pretty easily. So I'm pretty happy with that. I don't think I really even need to bump up the powder charge or drop it. Uh, the, the load shoots really good. It's really smooth. It's like my other experiences with tight group. I love using it. Um, it does have a narrow operating window, and we talked about before plenty in the video about, uh, you know, you have to watch so you don't double charge a case. But it's an excellent powder, and it's very economical. Um, you really can't beat it in terms of the value for it, and um, it's just a wonderful powder. I just always have wonderful luck with it, and it just always serves me so well. So in conclusion, uh, I hope this uh, showed you guys that at the end of the day, you don't have to run out and buy thousands and thousands of dollars worth of equipment if you don't want to. Uh, if you want to, hey, cool, you know, go ahead. Um, you know, nothing wrong with that. Um, but you don't necessarily have to. If you do want to get started reloading uh, and uh, you don't have a lot of money or a lot of space or a lot of room, I've shown you in this video series that you can do it and it's very possible and it's actually not all that time consuming and also you can even break it down into parts too. So let's say for instance like hey uh, I want to load up 109 millimeters or 145s or whatever. Um, you can set your uh, you know your resizing die up and just use the hand press or if you buy like a, a bench a, uh, one of the uh, smaller bench presses or whatever and just knock out a hundred at a time for sizing. Or what I used to do was I used to just take a bucket of brass and just bang, 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 resize one after another. And then after I had, you know, 500 or a thousand cases, I'd move on to expanding and I'd knock out, you know, 
I'd go to the bench, uh, knock out a couple hundred at a time, and then uh, go do something else. And so you don't always even have to do it in one go either. But in total time, I would say outside of all the filming and everything, which complicated things, it probably took me 10 to 15 minutes to resize 100 cases with the hand press. Probably took me about the same time to uh, expand all those cases. Maybe about the same time to prime them. I'd probably say at least 15 minutes or so. And then uh, seating the bullet and dropping the powder, uh, you know, took maybe like two or three minutes to dial the, the powder measure in. And then, uh, then seating the bullet, that was pretty much a nothing burger. And then crimping was the same, and then away we go. So, you know, really at the end of the day, if I really kind of dedicated myself to it with total focus, you know, I could probably do all that in an hour. And so there again, it comes down to, yes, and a lot of folks say, well, you know, my time is worth more than that and all that. Well, you know, sometimes that is true. In life, you pay for things uh, because you don't, uh, you'd rather pay for them than put your time in. But here's also the other thing, too, is to some degree, I think we need to be somewhat self-sufficient uh, going forward. And there's, there's going to be, especially with the way things are, there's going to be a dearth a kind of, of skills out there. And so I think the more skills that you can learn and the more things that you're knowledgeable of, the better off you're going to be. And so reloading is one of those things. If you can be at least partway self-sufficient where you can reload some of your brass and you have components to do so, um, it's going to help you out a bit. And it just takes worries away. Um, it's just like other things in life whenever you, um, you know, you have investments that you make in life and other things like that that, uh, you know, uh, or you, you have plenty of factory ammo or plenty of ammo that you've reloaded or whatever. Like, I don't have to sit around like a lot of these guys and worry about ammo. So, um, you know, you shouldn't either. So hopefully at the end of the day, uh, you guys got a lot out of it. And uh, I encourage comments and stuff below. If you do want me to expand on anything more with this um, or anything else about the hand press, uh, certainly let me know. Because a lot of times... Uh, with these videos and video ideas, it actually comes from feedback from folks. So they maybe want to learn more about this or that, or, you know, maybe they want more explanation on something or whatever. And so I encourage you all to make comments down below about that stuff. So anyways, a lot of fun and stay tuned to the channel. We have a ton of different projects coming up here um, in the winter, and I'll be doing another video on that. And, uh, yeah, so, uh, it's going to be a big year. And so I hope that you guys, um, subscribe and, uh, stay tuned to the channel. Anyways, thanks folks. And we'll see you next time.